now what is up everybody it is your boy fry thank you once again for tuning into another video we back at it again with another question and answer questions from instagram so definitely follow me there if you have any questions and as always check out the description box to all the available resources below we have links towards our vocal preset store where you can gain access to a whole bunch of amazing vocal presets as well as uh, mixing courses vocal recording courses mastering courses you name it and for the guys and girls out there looking for distribution as well as uh, kind of digital ai mastering you can check out my 50 dollar off coupon code that'll get you 50 dollars off a year subscription to lander studio lander studio is basically a suite that gives you access to instant mastering um, distribution on all streaming platforms so you can get your songs uploaded the title spotify etc at an industry standard and there's so much more that i can go through but definitely check it out read more about it it is an amazing deal but with that being said let's hop straight into the video our first question how to make your song sound good on speakers and cell phones so this is a really good question it took me years to really get that what we call translation right okay which basically means does your mix sound good on whatever system you're mixing on in my case on my speakers um you know will it translate well to this iphone for example will it translate well to a toshiba laptop whatever it may be right and you know it's really a state of mind that you need to get into now for me personally you know, until I found out that, hey, it's really about making the mid-range right. My mixes were all over the place, right? I'm sure you're suffering from this as well. The treble sounds exaggerated, right? The vocal sounds way too loud. The bass doesn't, either you can't hear the bass at all, or it completely sucks the life out of your track, right? All of these problems are really because you don't, um, you know yet know that the mid-range is the most important part of a mix right so really what you want to be doing especially if you are not mixing in a perfectly tuned room with good speakers my best um advice is actually to just add an eq onto your master chain right um just like a, a, a what we call a bandpass filter which is basically just going to cut away all of the low end and all of the high end and trim it away to about i would say like 400 hertz you know up to there and then about 8,000 to 12,000 hertz because that's really where these cell phones are going to be translating. It's really where a cheaper sound system is going to be translating, right? It becomes more expensive to have speakers produce those extremes of the frequency spectrum. That's why there's a price difference between different speakers, right? And it's just physically impossible to put a subwoofer on something this small, right? So trim away some of that info and then really get to mixing and making sure that, you know, that part of your track sounds good. You know, listen to your, your mix softer. That way you can get that vocal balance right if you can just hear the vocal you know with the instruments then you know your balance is good or either too soft and obviously if you want a louder mix you want that vocal to pop out a little bit more but if you're hearing just vocal and a tiny bit of drums or a tiny bit of melody you know for sure that when you lift your um your song onto like a loud sound system or in the car your vocals going to be popping out way too much right so all of these little tricks that i've learned along the way have definitely helped me um get my translation better you know nowadays i can mix a track on my sound system and i bounce between the ns10s right there and then the focals and i've got a subwoof as well and i can listen to it on an iphone and i just put it like right close to my face because there's a left and right speaker on one of these phones and it sounds almost the same right obviously i'm not boosting the volume up none of these phones sound good at full volume so you want to leave it at like 40 percent and that'll give you a really nice accurate image and i don't feel the need to go into a car sound system anymore because i just know my mix is sound good with the way that i work and obviously the way that i work is really making sure that mid-range sounds good removing um clashing frequencies right if i am mixing a full set of stems from an artist right then i know that i'm gonna make sure that melody or that sample or whatever it is is blending well with that vocal so i may remove a little bit of frequencies here and there without you know making it noticeable right as time goes on you'll get better at doing that but definitely 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 realize that the name of the game is the mid-range and the way to cheat the mid-range is to subtract instead of boost Okay, so I know that's a whole lot. It's just kind of things that come off the top of my mind. But, you know, all of these techniques have helped me better my mixing and hopefully they will work for you. VSR44 asks, how to work LUFS? So, for those who don't know what LUFS stands for or don't know what it's about, let's do a little bit of a history lesson right here. Um, LUFS stands for loudness units with reference to full scale. And basically, 
It is just a monitoring system that is widely used around the world by different streaming services, TV services, radio services, you name it. It is now the kind of normalized standard in regards to setting overall loudness for different material. Okay, it is much better than the RMS standard, which I think means for root mean square, something like that. But that was the old school way that we measured um, different types of music. But the reason why LUFS was introduced was because people were finding that if you were watching TV, for example, right, and then, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm somebody who contributed to this, right, to the loudness wars. Um, I, I used to work at a commercial facility where we would make our adverts as loud as possible because we knew that when you hit the ad break and went to the kitchen to get a soda or whatever, the TV advert would be so much louder than the TV show you were watching that you just had to kind of pay attention to it, right? So, you know, the LUFS standard was introduced to normalize that difference between the advert and the TV show. But guess what? It doesn't really work in today's world, okay? People are still abusing the loudness maximizers and things like that, but overall, it is definitely helping. So to answer your question on how to work it, the first thing you want to ask yourself is what standard are you going to be mixing to? Because remember, the LUFS standard can either be to minus 23 for traditional TV or movies or things like that. I think um, Netflix maybe have a little bit louder, maybe minus 22, I don't know. I haven't done anything for Netflix, but every different service will have its own standard okay um all of the major music streaming services will have slightly different levels that they wish to aim towards so for example um i'll pop it up on the screen because i can't tell you off top i always forget but you'll see that there are all these different standards okay uh, for example i know youtube wants minus 14 which is what their algorithm is going to tune all material towards so that you can enjoy a pleasant experience while sitting on YouTube, right? You don't want to be lying on the couch watching a show or watching a favorite YouTuber and then the next show is way louder, right? So everything's going to be normalized and uh, that's really how you're going to work within that LUFS realm, right? When I used to work TV adverts, we knew minus 23 LUFS was the set standard, okay? I remember getting a call once from a guy at the broadcast server saying, hey man, your track is sitting at like minus, or the advert is sitting at minus 15 or something. And I was like, no, it's not. It's sitting at minus 23. Come to find out that the video guy who did the final export had actually left two versions of our advert on top of each other. So it was basically doubling up and was getting way louder, right? So, you know, people take this seriously. Um, again, if you're gonna be mixing, just mixing rap music, making it really loud, uh, minus eight to minus 10 LUFS is really that ballpark where you wanna be aiming towards. In my opinion, that is more than loud. If you know what you're doing, you can get all the way up to like minus six, minus 5.5 LUFS, but you really need to know what you're doing because you know what an amateur will do is just try and make things as loud as possible, whereby as a professional will use different techniques to trim away the loudest elements of a mix in order to get that crest factor up. The crest factor is kind of that overall energy or loudness within a mix, right? There's no sense of having your kick drum clipping heavy, right? And then your vocals being down here and then trying to maximize that vocal to come up because the kick drum is just gonna sound worse and worse and worse getting hit into a limiter, right? So all these things you need to study, but all in all, find the standard that you're working towards and then mix towards that standard. Make sure that you're not over compressing your mix in order to get to that standard, right? In, in today's world, it's okay if your track is sitting at like minus 11. If it's a good song, it's a good song. But if you wanna be competitive, minus eight to minus 10, good stuff. If you know what you're doing, minus six, right? You didn't get that from me, <laughs> but yeah, good luck mixing. Our next question. Would you recommend NS10s for home studios with not so great acoustics? That is a very good question question because the ns10s right these speakers right here that actually look like for many younger engineers look like yamaha hs5s or hs8s or whatever are a very famous speaker with a very interesting history okay these speakers began their life as a experimental hi-fi speaker that yamaha had introduced to the public now what made these speakers experimental was that they actually had a natural boost i'll pull up a chart on the screen um, of where the boost is. It's about at 1.2 kilohertz or something like that. But the speakers were actually not so great to listen to for home enthusiasts because they just really emphasize all of that really harsh frequency um, within a living space, right? So many listeners of music didn't like these speakers. So they basically, I can't say failed as, as, as a home theater speaker, but they definitely weren't popular amongst most audiophiles is what you'd call them, or hi-fi enthusiasts, right? These are basically people who love listening to music in the highest quality possible within their living rooms. It failed as that, but as time went on, engineers actually began 
putting these in studios because of the issue of that high frequency boost, right? When you work with a kind of um, disadvantage, right, like that, it actually forces you to mix much more critically. Um, these speakers also help the engineers kind of identify, you know, if a vocal was too loud or not, if a snare drum was popping out or not, right? And as time went on, people really started to use these speakers and it kind of became a set standard um, all the way to today where if you aren't mixing on these speakers um, or at least referencing your mix on these speakers or, or referencing other songs on these speakers, you're really missing out, right? Now, sure, there are hundreds and thousands of engineers who don't even, never even listen to NS10s and produce great mixes. But if you're a guy like me, you know, you love the history of stuff, you're gonna wanna mess around with these speakers. Now to answer your question, will they sound good in a room with not so good acoustics? My answer would be yes. Okay, I used to work at a studio that only had a pair of NS10s. We didn't have a sub, we had nothing, right? Just a pair of NS10s and a DigiDesign 003 console, right? Very sterile sounding. But I used to produce really nice mixes. That was really the first time where I started to mix better, right? So if people ask me, should I buy the NS10s? I would say yes, it's definitely worth it. Just remember that you will need a amplifier. Remember these aren't self-powered speakers, meaning they don't contain amps in them, like for example, these Focals, right? Um, you can get them between, I don't know what the prices of NS10s are. They used to be $500 a pair, but you'll have to buy the speakers and then an amp as well. It doesn't have to be a fancy amp, right? A lot of people are gonna say you need to buy the high quality amp. I don't believe in that, right? These were home audio file speakers, right? You know, people were just listening to them on whatever amps could power them. Um, I, I do that. Lately, I'd really just use the NS10s as part of my mixing process. I do most of my work on the Focals just because they're full range speaker with the sub that sounds really good, really hi-fi. But I will always listen on the NS10s just to listen to what that vocal sounds like, just to listen to what that balance sounds like, right? Now, the secret to mixing with NS10s in a room that is not well treated is to turn your speakers down, right? You mix at lower volumes and you just make sure everything is balanced, everything is, is sticking out in the way it's supposed to. It's not popping out in the wrong way. And if your mix sounds good on NS10s, I swear to you, it will sound good on any speaker system. So I would definitely say it's a good investment. If you can find a decent working pair, take care of those speakers because as a mixer, you'll have them forever. So shout out to you. Ura. Our last question is free vocal mixing plugins. So I think what you're asking is what are some great free vocal mixing plugins? And in my opinion, um, you know, the stock stuff in your door is great. But if you want to add in that analog style workflow that I'm a big advocate of on this channel, I would definitely recommend getting plugins from these two companies. They're 100% free. The first one would be Air Windows. Okay, Chris is a audio designer. He is a coder. He's a mathematician, all around smart guy, a musician as well. And I watch his videos every week on new stuff that he's able to make. And man, he makes some really amazing stuff. Probably my favorite um, plugins from him would be Bus Color 4, Channel 9, or the Channel series in general, to tape. Um, he's got a whole bunch of different plugins that model different parts of analog mixing workflow. And uh, in my opinion, he makes some of the best stuff. Now again, none of his plugins are visually appealing in any way. They run pretty much the stock standard, you know, wrapper layout of any VST plugin. So if you want fancy looking plugins, he's definitely not gonna be um, your final answer, but you can mix that together with the next company, which is Analog Obsession. Analog Obsession, you know, I don't know which country the guy's from, but he's somewhere in South America, I guess. And the community have been funding him to make awesome free plugins for years now and he's already been producing some cool stuff you know i love the um, ssl recreation that he does ssq he has some neve emulations you know just take a look at the patreon check out all of the wonderful plugins that he has and uh, download you know donate if you can to both um creators um you know my opinion i would just mix those together with my stock stuff again you can just google free auto tune plugin if you do want a free auto tune but again in FL Studio, you have the picture plugin. So in my opinion, you can really do some good work for really cheap. So hopefully that answers your question. And uh, yeah, shout out to everyone for posting questions on Instagram. I will post another one soon. Hopefully you enjoyed this video if you stuck around till the end. Um, but yeah, man, I'll check you out in the next one. Definitely make sure to smash that like button if you learned something, if you enjoyed this video. And check out those links below to up your game as a mixer and help support the channel. I'll check out the next one. Peace out.